What's good, everybody? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. In high school, one of my favorite rap groups was a tribe called Quest. And of course, one of the main people in Tribe Called Quest is Q-Tip. Obviously, you had um, Ashaheed Muhammad, Jerobi White, and of course, probably the best MC in the group is no longer with us, Fife Dog, right? So Fife Dog was actually, I believe, five foot tall. Uh, but anyways, legendary rap group, one of the best groups of all time. Um, underrated in comparison it's like Wu-Tang Clan, but Tribe Called Quest was bringing the heat, no doubt. Um, now, here's the situation with Q-Tip. Q-Tip recently put this up on Twitter. There was a girl I went to high school with, Pamela Sweat. We went to Prince concert in ninth grade at Madison Square Garden. Pam, if you're out there, I'd love to know you are well. I think of you often. Now, what happened was somebody posted this picture of her in, uh, well, she's a cheerleader, beautiful young lady. Q-tip goes, yes, that's her. Um, her in high school, yes, beautiful, right? Um, then posted a picture of her. Um, this is her now, so it's still not so bad, right? Looking nice. Um, that is her. And he was glad to hear from her. And you know, that's how it is, right? And somebody made the uh, comment, she looked like she could be a single mother tip, which means God saved her for you. Go be happy. I think it was somebody being, you know, facetious there. But I kind of want to talk about that because, you know, obviously there are people in our lives that, you know, we really are crazy about. It's people I haven't seen from years. And it'd be, I wouldn't care if they were still fine or if there was, you know, for the women, if they were like 4,000 pounds or whatever, it wouldn't matter to me. I would just be glad to see them and hear from them and catch up. And that's what he's looking at there, right? But I also want to kind of talk about the downside of some of these things. And this is not for this um, sister here. She's married, I believe, and, um, you know, has kids and stuff. And you know, I'm not going to talk about that, but I will talk about myself. You know, brothers. Um, th there, there was a time where I was dating this chick from high school. I really loved this girl. And I mean, I was crazy about her. Um, wanted to marry her, all the, all, all the stuff. She happened to work at Target, right? And um, that doesn't mean that that's bad that she worked at Target, right? But she's happened to work at Target. I happened to be there, okay? I saw her. And when I saw her, I was like, oh, wow. Um, it was almost like, who, who, I, I hate to say it, but it's almost like, who whooped your ass? You know what I mean? Like, and again, you know, didn't take care of herself so well. What life had treated her sort of bad. And, um, and again, this was a chick that, you know, she had, you know, we had, she had kind of had played me, right? And so, she saw me, I mean, I've always been dusty looking myself, but I saw her, you know, how you doing? And, you know, vibing a little bit. You know, give me your number, I get your number. Glad to see you. And you're glad to get up out of there, right? And some of the things that you notice very quickly is, if, as a man, um, or anybody that's, you know, from a, a certain community, most people never leave the hood, right? They never really leave the place. They never really leave that city. And then they end up dealing with people from that city. They end up having a rough life. And don't you ever think about, man, what would my life have been had I stayed here with your ass? How miserable would I be today? And then you sit back and you really thank God for the victory that, you know, you were able to take a risk. You were able to get out. You were able to go out and um, achieve something in life because you know when you, you you don't really know it then but just give it like 10 years and you find out that to put the hood on pause and it's not to make fun of anybody or whatever like that but you find out that man you know I thought I was missing something at the time and I just didn't know that I wasn't missing anything you know um 
I was in I was in Nigeria in um, September. Had a great time in Nigeria. Right after Nigeria, I was in Dubai, and then right after Dubai, I was in uh, Chigali. It was like back to back, and just to be able to hop in those three countries after that, you know, to see so many good looking ladies out there, just to see so many high class people, to meet people, to be able to be on that same level um, that I'm trying to be on. When I go back and I come across people, I'm glad to see them, but I'm glad when, they're, when, I, when they leave. I'm also glad to get away from them too. And I, I know that sounds bad. I know that sounds terrible. I know that's not right, but I am glad to get away from them also. As much as I'm glad to see them. Um, I want to see them for like five or 10 minutes. I, I'm ready to go. I see all I need to see. And I'm not saying that he feels the same way about this lady because obviously he was on her mind. So he wasn't look, you know, thinking that she was going to be looking the exact same or anything like that. But you're going to typically find out, man, that a lot of your friends or family are just people that you you like catching up with you don't want to catch up with them so much longer once you get back my brother moved up uh, back to la when he was like 22 no about 20 i was about 10 when he left he could never stay in sacramento longer than 72 hours it would almost make him miserable right and i was like damn man you know gotta catch up with him because he's on the way back now with me if i go back to, to sacramento to back to the united states if i'm there for like seven days I get miserable, bro. Like I can't stay there that long. I stayed in Sacramento all of like 10 days. And I was just like, I couldn't wait to get the f out of there. Uh, my mom just takes it personal. Why oh, you don't want to see here longer. And it's not that it's just, you know, it's not my life anymore. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm used to, you know, I was in Luxembourg. I was enjoying being in Luxembourg. I mean, when I was in Luxembourg. I didn't want to leave, you know, um, He'll go to London. I'm, 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 I'm there. I'm here going to South Africa. I'm there, and um, you know, and I'm, and, and I'm glad to meet people when I, when I, when I see them. But the people in my life, I, I left them. I left them where I found them for a reason. And that's something I want you to know that Q-Tip, he had a calling on his life to go and do other things. And you, you still think about people, but his goal was to do what he was doing, which was not that. And on that pathway, I want you guys to know the people who can help you the most in this life, you have not met them left. You gotta just keep on living. Man, life is beautiful when you go that route. And, um, and some of the people, man, I, I, I care about them. I think about them uh, from time to time. But man, as you're, as, you're, as you're matriculating going through this life, man, and you start just really seeing like how your life would have ended up if you would have stayed in a certain situation, you start thanking God, man. Like you actually start like almost speaking in tongues. You know what I mean? It's like, man, God, I really thank you for that right there. Because if it wasn't for you, I would be like them, you know? And I'm not saying this to be mean or stuck up, but keep trying to push yourself forward, man. It's so much out there. So guys, what do you think? It's your boy O'Shea Duke Jackson. Back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. Appreciate you for all you subscribe to the bell. We're out. Oh, 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 oh,